This is Local 15 Today. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kelly Foster. And I'm Darwin Singleton. This morning on Local 15 Today, controversy at Alabama's state capitol as state auditor Jim Ziegler plans to head to court. He's asking Governor Ivey to save him the trip. We'll explain how that move could cost the state big bucks. And what will it cost Congress to bring the rail service back to the Gulf Coast? We'll find out in about 30 days. This morning, how close the Southern Rail Commission and Amtrak are to working out a deal. Also, it looks like the Crescent Theater might not be moving after all, or might not be closing. It could be moving, and we'll tell you how the owner's working to make sure that this downtown venue keeps its doors open. But first, let's go to the weather wall with Kelly Foster. Hey, Darwin. Well, here's a look at the live pinpoint Doppler. We're not looking at any rain right now. We do have some ground clutter, though, along Highway 45, Highway 98, and a little bit up Highway 43. We do have quite a bit of saturation in the air. We've had that warm onshore flow, and then we had a front that was just kind of draped across the area yesterday, and we did see a few little showers pop up along it. But as we sail into your Thursday, we are going to be looking less in the way of rain and more in the way of heat. So here's your hour by hour. 58 at 7 a.m. warming very quickly to 71 mid morning, 80 by lunch, 84 by 3 o'clock. And as we head towards 5 o'clock, we'll be right at 82 degrees. Here is a live look at traffic on this Friday Eve and where the Bayway meets the causeway. No fog here. So far, so good as you make your Thursday morning drive. New this morning, the body of a New York judge has been found along the shore of the Hudson River. I'm Zora Asbury in the Local 15 Breaking News Center. 65 year old Sheila Abdu Salam made history when she became the first African American woman appointed to the New York Court of Appeals. The judge was reported missing Tuesday. Her body was found Wednesday. New York police say her body showed no signs of trauma. The medical examiner will try to determine her exact cause of death. Now, the New York governor, Andrew Cuomo, appointed Abdu Salam to the state's highest court in 2013. He released a statement Wednesday calling her a, quote, pioneer and a force for good whose legacy will be felt for years to come. In the breaking news center, Zora Asbury, Local 15 News. Thank you, Zora. Alabama's new governor has a decision to make about Alabama's new U.S. Senator. On Kay Ivey's to-do list this morning is deciding whether to move up the date for a special election for one of Alabama's two U.S. congressmen. The special election would allow Alabama voters to choose a permanent U.S. Senator to fill the seat of former Senator Jeff Session. It's a seat that currently is being held by former Attorney General Luther Strange. He was appointed without a special election by now former Governor Robert Bentley. Well, Bentley temporarily appointed Strange to the seat after Sessions accepted the position as U.S. Attorney General. Governor Bentley then set a special election date for November 2018 to coincide with the statewide general election. Well, according to Alabama State Auditor Jim Ziegler, Bentley made a sneaky move that technically is illegal. Governor Bentley arranged the special election and delayed it so that his appointed U.S. Senator would get almost two years of a free ride before having to face the voters of Alabama. Alabama law states that if a vacancy of a seat occurs more than four months from the general election, a special election must be set immediately and without delay. Bentley says reasoning behind his delay is to save state millions of dollars. Mobile area lawmaker Chris Pringle says he agrees. It's going to cost the general fund millions and millions and millions of dollars, and if whoever wins will have to turn around, you know, literally six months later and be back on the ballot again. Since joining the union, only 10 U.S. senators representing Alabama have vacated their seats. Five of those seats were filled by governor appointments, but not one of those appointments lasted two years. State Auditor Jim Ziegler hopes Governor Ivey will reschedule the special election. If not, Ziegler will fight it in court. He has a court hearing set for next Wednesday, so his lawsuit against the former governor can be heard. Well, the Southern Rail Commission and Amtrak say they're closer than ever than they've ever been to the last decade, bringing rail service back to the Gulf Coast. Officials saying that while they're still working with federal and state lawmakers and negotiating with the passenger service, they expect a federal financial report within the next 30 days. What that report will say is, here's what it takes. Here's the improvements needed to the railroads. Here's the conditions of the stations. So that lets Congress know who set aside money for this, what it's going to cost. In 2005, Amtrak bid the Port City farewell after Hurricane Katrina damaged the tracks. 
There are new efforts underway this morning to save the Crescent Theater in Mobile. Earlier this month, board members said they would not renew the lease at their current location. After meetings with the Downtown Mobile Alliance, the owner says he's now considering relocating further up Dolphin Street. It is uh, very tenuous at the moment, but there is a plan, and that is to see about relocating to 450 Dolphin Street, which is a building that is perfect for a theater configuration. Officials are currently just in the talking stage. The Crescent Theater is set to close at its current location in May. And that would be a blow to the downtown entertainment district because it's the only theater we have downtown actually even this side of I-65. Yeah, and it's just kind of a really cool place to go because it's different, mm -hmm. it's cozy, and it's just kind of nostalgic. I really love the Crescent Theater. Plus Very they cool. they also have uh, some really good, you almost see the movies that you see at the Crescent at some right. of the other theaters. So yeah. it's, it's kind of got its niche in downtown Mobile. It sure does. All right, Super well, let's, cool. Let's hope they can save it. Really. I know. Sends a strong message uh, to those involved in cockfighting, especially in the state of Alabama, that they're not above the law. Lawmakers, you can be found guilty too. The latest in our local 15 cockfighting exclusive shows Alabama lawmakers may have been involved in the operation. This morning, a Florida officer facing manslaughter charges after the 2016 shooting of a man who didn't have a gun. And do you know about Henrietta Lacks? The significance of what her cells have meant, I think the world needs to know that. And now they will. How Oprah Winfrey is working to spread the name of the woman who changed the world of medicine. And it's going to be a fantastic Friday Eve. All that rain fading out, sunshine making a comeback, and temperatures will respond. Dress light today. I'll let you know how warm that mercury is going to rise after the break. Best newscast in the state by the Alabama Broadcasters Association. Local 15 weather with meteorologist Kelly Foster. Good morning. We're getting closer and closer to Easter Sunday and the weather is going to be turning a little toastier. Here's a look at the live pinpoint Doppler. And we do have a little bit of ground clutter here across the northwest corner of Mobile County. There is no rain, but we do have a very saturated air mass. Fog does not look to be too problematic though this morning as you make your drive. We'll be watching that visibility ever so close and take a look right now. Mobile looking high and dry. We had a front draped across the area yesterday. We did have a few pop up showers happen along it, but high pressure is wedging in. It kind of squashes down the atmosphere, suppressing rain, suppressing clouds. So it's going to be another beauty of a day. 79 degrees for the spring breakers lining our shoreline. Those temps are going to be trending higher. The Bay Bears are going to have uh, the second game in their home stand against the Jackson Generals. They're going to be playing each and every day all the way through Easter Sunday. And then the Easter egg hunting is on and we're not rolling out a little pop up shower that you may have to hop over here and there, but we're not going to be looking at a washout. Loving this Greg Vertalis. This is what I want to be doing this weekend and that's heading out on the boat. And there's a look there at Dog River. For some reason in Dog River, those sunsets are just absolutely spectacular. They always tend to look magenta. And then we've got the lavender sky here in Gulf Shores. Marie Weiser snapped that of our beautiful sky there at the beach along with the seagull. As we head through your Thursday, not a whole lot happening here. By Friday, that onshore flow becomes a little bit more pronounced, so we're going to warm it up a little, even more so. To, so to stay in touch with your Easter forecast on Sunday, I know a lot of folks are going to be planning some outdoor activities. You can download that local 15 weather app. And of course, we got the Bay Bears 635 taking on the generals looking great and 82 degrees Easter Sunday. Miss Cottontail is ready to hop all along the port city and she's trying to kind of stomp out that 20% chance of a shower, but that won't slow her down. We're going to be holding in the low 80s Sunday through Wednesday. She changed the world of medicine, and now the world will learn her name. She was a woman. She was black. 
with limited education, limited finances, and look what she has done for the world. Hear about Henrietta Lacks and how her family is now taking back its history. A Florida police officer faces felony charges for the 2016 shooting of an unarmed man who was holding up his hands. State officials say North Miami police officer charged Jonathan Aledo with attempted manslaughter and misdemeanor culpable negligence. Aledo was caught on camera last July shooting Charles Kenzie. Kenzie was a behavioral therapist and the caretaker of an autistic man who wandered away from a group home. He's seen in this video lying on his back in the street explaining that Arnaldo Rios was holding a toy truck and was harmless. But despite Kenzie's many pleas not to shoot, Aletta shot him in the leg. A mudslide is, is caught on tape as it covers a portion of a highway in Idaho. Watch this. You can see the hillside start to slide, start to move slowly, even gently, but the damage is done. Mud, rocks, and trees slid down with such force that it pushed two layers of concrete barriers off the road. Officials estimate that 800 cubic yards of debris came down. The surveyor who took the video was assessing the stability of the hillside when he first heard popping and cracking. Crews have since cleared all the debris. Charlie Murphy, the older brother of actor and comedian Eddie Murphy, has died. His death was announced Wednesday. Murphy was a performer in his own right, best known for his work on The Chappelle Show with comedian Dave Chappelle. Murphy was also a writer on that Comedy Central show that you just heard about. Comedian's representative confirmed that he lost his battle with leukemia. Murphy was 57 years old. Now to a story about one of the most important women in modern medicine. Henrietta Lacks has gone down in history as a woman who transformed modern medicine. The problem is Lacks died without knowing the impact she had on the world and to this day Many people have never even heard her name. NBC's Kristen Dahlren explains how Oprah Winfrey, along with the cast, is changing that. All I got to say about that is, hallelujah. Finally, somebody wanted to talk about my mama. Oprah Winfrey plays the daughter of Henrietta Lacks, the woman who transformed modern medicine and had no idea. To this day, many have never heard her name. I started asking people, do you know, have you ever heard of Henrietta Lacks ever? No one had. So Something I Winfrey is now determined to change. Myself. The significance of what her cells have meant, I think the world needs to know that. And now they will. Lacks was a young mother of five who died of cervical cancer in 1951 at Johns Hopkins, where doctors found her unique and aggressive cancer cells were the first to grow in a lab. Henrietta never gave doctors permission to use her cells, and her family was never told. We didn't know nothing about nothing. Like nothing they'd seen before, those cells, shortened to HeLa instead of Henrietta's full name, were used to test the polio vaccine, develop in vitro fertilization, and drugs used to fight cancer, just to name a few. Her daughter Deborah and author Rebecca Skloot finally uncovered the truth. But Deborah died just before Skloot's book was published. I refuse to cry with you, Kristen, <laughs> but I could when I think about Deborah, how eager she was to know about her mother and to have this story told. Henrietta's cells were reproduced in labs around the world and millions of dollars changed hands. Becca showed me the papers where he wanted to use her name, but the lawyers didn't and want Hopkins to. And Hopkins made all that money off of our mother. Hopkins ain't made a dime. Johns Hopkins says it did not profit. The family got nothing. But for the next generation, there is a new mission now. You can't help but be proud of what is done. So when you think about that, it's like, okay, something bad happened, but something so much good has come from it. David Lax now sits on a board at the National Institutes of Health helping to decide just what Henrietta's gene sequence is used for. And I think we ought to think of the Lacks family as some of the greatest philanthropists in medicine of all time. They speak around the country, <laughs> urging doctors to never forget the patient behind the Petri dish. She was a woman. She was black. 
with limited education, limited finances, and look what she has done for the world. <laughs> Rebecca Skloot has set up a foundation for the Laxes and others who've contributed to science without their consent. If anyone had taken just a few minutes to listen to her and ask, answer her questions, it would have changed the whole story for her, for her family. A family now taking back its history. I think uh, what we're trying to say is that her life really mattered. A legacy, just like Henrietta Sells, living on. Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News, Los Angeles. Good morning, everybody. Time to rise and shine. It's still early. It's 521. There's no rain out. We've seen just a little bit of light fog, primarily west of Mobile in Jackson County. Visibility averaging just under two miles, about a mile and a half. And then we're looking at seven mile visibility for Gulf Shores. We'll be watching. We could see a little bit of light sea fog begin to roll its way inland. But if you want to exercise today, it's warming up. 84 degrees is going to be the maximum number today, and we will have a lighter wind across the area. Here is a look at what's in store for the spring breakers though. Mobile County, uh, they've got day four of spring break at the beach. There's going to be a low threat of rip currents. The UV forecast is going to be moderate to high and we will have that water temperature in the low 70s. The temp at the beach is 79. Darwin. All right, buddy, thank you. Mobile Infirmary is our new introducing a new procedure for cardiac care. How cardiac patients will be able to benefit. We'll tell you when we come back. Aim to help save lives is now available at Mobile Infirmary. Mobile Infirmary now offers a new type of procedure room care for cardiac care. The operating room suite was specifically built for advanced cardiovascular operations in half the time. Certainly good news for cardiac patients as this procedure is less invasive. For patients, it, it represents an opportunity for them to get back to life as usual on a much quicker basis. Whereas 20 years ago, they'd spend weeks uh, in the hospital and months recovering from the surgeries that the, the new operations were able to do with this technology. They're back to work within a week. They're back to living life as usual within a few days. Mobile Infirmary is also bringing other innovative heart treatments to the Mobile area, such as the latest technology and pacemakers. For more information, we posted a link to their website, local15tv.com. Four arrests have already been made and now reports show that Alabama lawmakers may also have been involved in a car fighting operation. This morning, the message officials are sharing, warning them that they too could be found guilty. And here's a look at the live pinpoint Doppler. So far, so good on this Friday Eve. We're looking at some ground clutter in the northwest corner of the viewing area, but temps are going to be warming up. Dress light. We'll talk about your Easter Sunday forecasts coming up. This is Local 15 Today. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kelly Foster. And I'm Darwin Singleton. Thanks so much for joining us for Local 15 Today. The state of Florida is under a state of emergency. This declaration comes after wildfires have burned thousands of acres and have threatened more than two dozen homes there. Local 15's Zora Asbury has been monitoring this. She's joining us live with more about the fire. Zora? Darwin, that's right. A state official says there is no corner of the state that has not been touched that hasn't been facing wildfire conditions. I'm Zora Asbury in the Breaking News Center. Across Florida, fire scorched more than 125 square miles of land. Now, dry conditions across the state have provided plenty of fuel for those flames. Experts say this is the worst fire season in history so far for Florida and their memory. Now, so far, there have not been any widespread evacuations, but officials do urge residents to be ready for basically anything. Forecast Pastors are expecting breezy conditions and very little rain over the next few days, which will make it very dry and also very little relief for the state's firefighters. In the breaking news center, Zora Asbury, Local 15 News. Thank you, Zora. Here is a live look at the pinpoint Doppler and our air mass super saturated. We're not picking up a whole lot in terms of rain. We do have some ground clutter near Highway 98, Highway 45. Sometimes that can be just a flock of birds, but nonetheless, you're not going to need the umbrella today. You will need to dress light. Here's a look at your hour by hour. 58 at 7, 71 mid morning, 80 by lunch. 84 is going to be the high today. We get there at 3 o'clock and then by 5 o'clock drive, we're going to be right at 82. We are taking it to the streets north and south along I-65 at Spring Hill. We're not seeing any accidents this morning.
Well, a $5,000 reward is being offered this morning to anyone who can give information on animal fighting operations in our area. And this reward being offered following the arrest of four suspects accused of participating in a cockfighting operation in Mobile County. This morning, word that some state lawmakers may also be guilty of working with them. It sends a strong message uh, to those involved in cockfighting, especially in the state of Alabama, that they're not above the law. The Humane Society of the United States says the work put into this bust to bust this cockfighting operation was significant. Tens of thousands of dollars were being exchanged at every fight and thousands of birds were brutally killed for amusement. The federal indictment notes how the Alabama Game Fowl Breeders Association raised money at cockfights to help lobbymakers in Montgomery keep state cockfighting laws weak. It mentions how they had a quote friend who was a state representative. Have a, a group uh, that is for cockfighters that is a registered nonprofit in the state um, that is raising money at an illegal cockfighting venture um, to fight legislation. Um, you know, we, we've known this for years. I'm happy that the FBI recognized that as a serious issue. Now, if you're aware of other animal fighting operations and you can give information, you could be rewarded $5,000. The information you provide would have to lead to an arrest and a conviction, and you can remain anonymous. The offer is a $5,000 reward, and if you'd like information that leads to an arrest and conviction, once again, you can remain anonymous. This morning, Alabama Governor Kay Ivey is on a mission to permanently replace former ALEA Secretary Stan Stabler. Wednesday, the governor accepted Stabler's resignation. Governor Ivey then named Hal Taylor as the acting ALEA Secretary, a move that is not surprising lawmakers in the state capitol. I mean, I know a couple weeks ago I was in her office and uh, Mr. Pelham showed me a, a, a big file. He said, this is the transition plan. I said, you already have a plan? He goes, we're not going to leave anything to chance. In case there's a transition of power, we want to be ready for it. The governor fired Rebecca Mason's husband from his state position Tuesday. Rebecca Mason, the woman who allegedly had an affair with then Governor Bentley, began an avalanche of controversy. There are reports this morning that Governor Kay Ivey is also abolishing the Office of Rural Development and firing its department head, Ron Sparks. That office was created to improve and advance education, health care, and economic development in rural areas. Now, in spite of the end of the department, leaders in Baldwin County say they're optimistic Governor Ivey's time in office will get business back on track. There's uh, functions that can be consolidated and maybe can be delivered uh, in a different way, hopefully more efficiently. I'm sure that if she abolishes it, that the responsibilities of that office would be transferred to, uh, to another department. Representatives tell us Governor Ivey has a fondness for South Alabama along with a good relationship with the legislatures in the area. We told you yesterday how President Trump's costly vacations in his first three months in office is on track to surpass the amount of money former President Obama spent on his vacations his entire eight years as president. Well, this morning it looks like President Trump may be on his way to a vacation again. Today, the president's heading to his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida where he is expected to spend that weekend. It's unclear whether this is truly just a vacation or if Mr. Trump's plans to hold meetings during his stay there. Now, in the past, the president has used his Florida Country Club to meet with the Japanese prime minister and the Chinese president. So far this year, the president has made six trips to his Mar-a-Lago estate, totaling 21 days. Churches and politics have largely been kept separate, but now President Trump and congressional Republicans want to make it easier for religious groups to get into the political game. Our digital news partner Circa has our story. If your pastor is preaching politics from the pulpit, he may be crossing a fine line in the tax code, but President Trump wants to change that. I will get rid of and totally destroy the Johnson Amendment. Since 1954, the Johnson Amendment to the U.S. Tax Code has prevented charitable religious organizations and other nonprofit groups from endorsing or opposing political candidates. Critics of the amendment say it has a chilling effect on pastors and religious groups that ultimately limits their free speech. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to pastors um, at churches uh, who are trying to just be very careful with the law and they feel very hamstrung with what they can say from the pulpit. 
House Republicans have said they plan to remove the amendment in a tax reform bill. But not all religious groups are on board. Over 100 religious groups delivered a letter to Congress last week, urging them not to change the Johnson Amendment. If a church, as a group, decides they want to get into all of the political mess and start endorsing candidates and giving money to candidates, they can do that now. They just have to give up their 501c3 tax status. They argue that repealing the amendment would not only create a new loophole for dark money in political campaigns, but it would also damage the integrity of houses of worship. We might start seeing a First Baptist Republican church and a First Baptist Democratic church. For Circa, I'm Kellen Howell. Well, a four-year-old girl was nearly shot while playing in an Arizona barber shop. Take a look at this video. This video from a security camera inside the shop shows a child hanging around near the front windows. What no one inside knew at the time was that three men had just had a verbal dispute in the tattoo parlor next door. Seconds later, three shots were fired. One of those shots went through the window of the barber shop and grazing right past this young girl. The men have been charged in the shooting. It was a close call for one puppy in Tampa, Florida. A Florida family got a frightening surprise last weekend when an alligator showed up at their front door. There it goes. Family called the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission to come capture the gator, who informed the family that the alligator was going after their dog. Luckily for the family, the reptile crossed the street and kept walking through a neighbor's yard. And look at this. Someone stumbled upon a horse stuck in a sinkhole. This picture was taken Tuesday in Clee Alum, Washington. Firefighters and an excavation company worked to set that horse free. They used ladders and plywood to keep dirt and rocks from falling in on the horse. And the excavating company they called dug the soil around the horse to install a makeshift ramp. He finally just pranced up the ramp and was out of the hole. Oh, right. how cute. Well, from horses to bears, the Bay Bears, that is, and their fans. They met up at the Hank for the first time this season. We have highlights of Wednesday's home opener. They were playing against the Jackson Generals. And when is the last time you stepped away from your desk at work to take a lunch break? Maybe today's the day you should try it. We'll tell you why. And weather-wise, we're going to be moving on up into the mid-80s today. So if you're trying to figure out what to wear, dress light. We'll talk about what's in store for Easter Sunday after the break. In fast newscast in the state by the Alabama Broadcasters Association. Just Kelly Foster. You know, those sugary sand beaches, we were just hearing that song there. Uh, they're going to be a great place to be today, right? Yes, and everybody is going to need the flip-flops because we are going to be warming on up today. In fact, high temperatures are going to be in the mid-80s. It should be a little Whoa. bit cooler, though, at the beaches, but good weather to put on the bathing suit and uh, make sure that you wear that sunscreen, too, because we're going to have more sunshine today. You were yeah. off yesterday. Mm -hmm. Did you get that bike ride in? I did get the bike Yay. ride in. It was perfect last night. We had a big crowd in uh, Midtown, and it was a lot of fun. I'm perfect so glad, because there was a few little thunderstorms that popped oh, up, little isolated yes, ones um, just after lunchtime, so I was hoping yesterday, I was missing you, Darwin, that you got that bike ride in. I know that you thoroughly enjoy it. All right, Live Pinpoint Doppler, so far so good here. Here is your hour by hour, 7 a.m., 58 degrees as we head towards mid-morning, 71, 80 at lunch, 84 will be the high today. We get there at 3, and by 5 o'clock, when you make your cruise home, we'll be at 82. All right, spring breakers talking about the Mobile County students at the beaches, 79 degrees. That water temp will be in the low 70s. The green flags are up, and that means go. Go swimming in the Gulf of Mexico because it's going to be nice and safe today as far as the rip currents. But always remember, swimming in the Gulf is a lot different than swimming in your backyard pool. So always take precaution. Those temps are going to be trending higher. The Bay Bears continue that homestand. Jackson Generals are going to be at the Hang for night two. And they're going to be playing in town at the ballpark all the way until Sunday. So no reason not to support the Bay Bears and have a little fun at the ballpark. All right, the Easter egg hunting is on. Yeah. <laughs> 
You may have to hop around a few little stray showers here and there, but that's not stopping anybody. And we've had some really pretty weather this week. Greg Vertalis, he snapped this picture for us a while back. He was on a boat cruise on Dog River. Marie Weiser loved that lavender sky and Gulf Shore. So as we show you the pinpoint predictor, not much to see. And that's a good thing, folks. When the maps are bare, that means beautiful conditions. It is going to be a little tropical out. This onshore flow is going to continue. So download that Local 15 weather app to stay in touch with the forecast if you're busy running around uh, hiding easter eggs and all that good stuff and you can't watch us on air or online you can write on your phone go to the app store wpmi wx 84 degrees it's going to be the max number today in mobile same for citronelle 83 pritchard 78 gulf shores and here's a look at that forecast if you're heading out to the Bay Bears at the Hank Aaron Stadium. We're going to have a temperature of 79. Uh, the first pitch is at 635 and you will need the sunglasses. And here's your Easter egg hunting forecast. Little chicky here and there. Sunrise on Easter morn 624. And notice not much rain around. Uh, looking great for Easter Sunday. And here's a look at traffic I-10 at Michigan. Everybody's rocking and rolling on this Thursday. Well, the two women accused of killing Kim Jong-nam, the brother of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, have had their day in court. They face charges after allegedly poisoning him with a deadly nerve agent. Local 15's Zora Asbury joins us with more. Good morning, Zora. Good morning, Darwin. The two women accused of killing Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother of North Korea's leader, went to court in Malaysia. I'm Zora Asbury in the Breaking News Center. Now, Wednesday, heavily armed security officers separated the suspects from the media as they arrived to the courthouse. The judge was in the case that was trying to prepare the transfer to a higher court for trial. Now, one of the suspects is from Vietnam. The other is from Indonesia. They've been charged with murder for allegedly smearing Kim Jong's face with VX nerve agent. It's a banned chemical weapon. Authorities say Kim was dead within an hour. The lawyer for the Indonesian woman said that his clients were duped into thinking that she was playing a harmless prank on an unsuspecting traveler. Now, Malaysia was not accused of North Korea's directly out of carrying the attack, but we're going to continue to monitor Monitor this story as more details become available. In the breaking news center, Zora Asbury, Local 15 News. Local 15 Sports with Lance Crawford. Sponsored by Eastern Shore Toyota. Good morning, everyone. Well, after a 10 year run as the AA affiliate of the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Bay Bears switched that affiliation following last season. They're now the Angels AA Farm Club. And last night, the Bay Bears played their 2017 home opener against the Jackson Generals, who assumed the Diamondbacks AA squad last year, meaning a lot of the Generals were Bay Bears a year ago. Mobile City Council members John Williams, Lamont Manzi, and Fred Richardson throwing out the ceremonial first pitches. Eh, we need some work there. Bay Bears starter Tyler Carpenter needs some work here, too. Gave up a leadoff double to start the game. Then Dowell Lugo, the little Texas leaguer here, scores Colin Walsh. one nothing Generals in the first. Could have been worse for Carpenter, however. But he gets former Bay Bear Kevin Crone to ground into the 5-4-3 inning ending double play. But we go bottom second. Generals raking Carpenter again. Rudy Flores high and deep and into the gap it goes. That scores Victor Reyes and Evan Marzilli, another one of those former Bay Bears. That was 3-0 Jackson. Then moments later, Michael Perez steps up, and he's going to send it into the other gap. Flores comes in, 4-0 Generals. The Bay Bears did tie it at 4, but it was all Jackson after that. They spoil the home opener, 10-5. Same two teams tonight beginning at 6-30. Now, it's not often the national champs are in town, but that's the case tonight as Coastal Carolina visits Stanky Field to play the first of three against the Jaguars. The Chanticleers won it all last year in Omaha, and you'll have the chance to see them up close in person beginning with the series opener tonight at 630. Meanwhile, Alabama back on the practice field yesterday for the 11th of 15 spring football workouts. Crimson Tide going to hold a scrimmage, their second of the spring tomorrow. It's closed to the public, but a week from Saturday, is the annual A-Day game that gets started at 2 o'clock at Bryant-Denny Stadium. It is free to the public, and it will be nationally televised. All right, that's going to do it for sports. Have a great day, everybody. All right, thanks, Lance. If you head out to the Hank to take in a ball game, you'll see where hundreds of thousands of your tax dollars went. The city spent more than $600,000 on improvements at the Hanks. Uh, half of the seats at the stadium are new. The rest will be in before the start of next season. And there's been new drainage installed. That's always been an issue out there. The scoreboard repaired and new protective netting put up as well. Happening this weekend, 
Easter in the squares. Head out to Bienville and Cathedral Squares this Saturday for some free family fun. Easter festivities begin at 10 a.m. in Bienville Square, where families can take part in paper flower making, kids karaoke, face painting, balloon art, and photos with Cottontail. At 11:20, the Easter egg hunt takes place, and this is for kids eight and under. And then at 11:45, the paper flower Easter parade begins. Then in Cathedral Square at lunch, right at noon, judges are going to give prizes who they believe leave have the best decorated stroller wagon and the best decorated pet. So head out there with your Easter garb. Restaurants across the country are gearing up for Easter brunches this weekend and workers at the Lake Elmo Inn in Minnesota are adding more pounds to an already excellent tradition. Each year chefs create a giant, a giant chocolate Easter egg. This year it weighs about 100 pounds. It also has about eight layers of chocolate. It took three days to create this edible egg. Mm, sounds good. So do you have the fear of lunching out? Lunching out? Okay, well, when, when was the last time you left work to grab some lunch? <laughs> lunching out. If you can't remember, it's time to try it. That's right, Darwin. Today is National Make Lunch Count Day, a day to empower workers to break away for lunch. Now, according to a 2016 study conducted by Sperling for TGI Fridays, 73% of workers eat lunch at their desk at least twice a week, while a third eat their lunch desk bound every day of the week. You do that a lot, Darwin. I do that sometimes uh, more than I'd like to. So in honor of the holiday, try to take some time today to break away from the job and enjoy your lunch break. The following segment is sponsored by Eastern Shore Toyota. We've reported on the D.A.R.E. program here in the past. The D.A.R.E. program, by the way, is a program where law enforcement teaches fifth graders about the real dangers and peer pressure they'll be facing in the very near future. It takes special officers to lead these kids, and in Baldwin County, they have the best in the state. Working with children and being a law enforcement officer is not for everybody, but the ones that do it really enjoy it. It's, it, uh, it, it quenches a thirst that you have that's way beyond just putting handcuffs on somebody. Deputy David Tetro had that thirst, and he is quenching it by influencing kids in Baldwin County. They're first and foremost. They're, they come number one. They're the next generation. Um, if we're going to keep crime off the streets, if we're going to have a safe community to live in, we got to start uh, when they're young. They're fifth graders. They're not uh, being influenced by peers like they will when they get a little older. We like to catch them before that happens and try to give them to make uh, positive choices. Deputy Tetro has been with the Sheriff's Office in Baldwin County for 11 years. A few years back, he found his real calling. You know, the position came open. Uh, they asked for letters, and I, I was one of the first ones to put one in. I thought I'd be well suited. I thought I'd enjoy it, and I, I was absolutely correct. So he became a D.A.R.E. officer, teaching kids the truth about drugs, alcohol, and bullying. You know, it's been the pleasure of my life to be a, a, a school resource officer and a D.A.R.E. officer. It's, you know, it's been a, uh, a good ride. And that ride has landed him in the winner's circle. A big surprise for Officer Tetro at the countywide D.A.R.E. graduation. I would like to recognize... David as the 2016-2017 Alabama Dare Officer of the State of Alabama. That's right, after just two years, he was named the State Dare Officer of the Year. What we look is for uh, a year commitment, I mean year-round commitment where they're working with kids during the summertime when school's out on the weekend, because dealing with kids today, to be uh, successful with them, you really have to work with them as much as you can. To be named by your peers, uh, to me that's the ultimate compliment for your peers to recognize your contributions. And so for someone here today to be recognized for their contributions to this effort, I think is uh, the highest honor. It's always good to be recognized for your efforts, but what's even better is uh, seeing all these young people graduate the D.A.R.E. programs today. That's what I'm really honored by. Congratulations to Deputy Tetro, a well-deserved honor. They were having fun, too. And don't forget, if a first responder has made an impact in your life, Local 15's Greg Peterson wants to tell your story. Just drop him a message on his Facebook page, Greg Peterson, Local 15 News. Well, birds have feelings, too. And this stork from Europe shows another male bird not to mess with his lover, no matter how long it takes for him to return home.
five minutes till the top of the hour. It's 555. If you want to get the car clean today, go for it. We're going to be topping out at 81 degrees. We're not expecting any wet weather today. A little bit of light fog this morning, but we're going to be moving up into the 80s as we head through the afternoon and Mobile County students on spring break. Looking great at the beach. Low threat of rip currents. It will be a little cooler there with highs in the upper 70s. Darwin. All right, Kelly. Can hand lotion be an accessory? to a crime? Well, that's what one Pensacola woman says. 27-year-old Wesley Dykus is in jail this morning, charged with grand theft and dealing in stolen property. Patricia Norris says while she was at a local restaurant, she applied lotion to her hands, which she says may have caused her nearly $3,000 ring to slip off her finger, but she didn't realize it until the next morning. After unsuccessfully searching for the ring at home and at the restaurant, Norris's friend tried using an app to find the ring. He was able to find the ring with the help of a detective as well as a person who tried to sell the ring online, which was Wesley Dykus. Now to a remarkable story about true lovebirds in Croatia, Europe. And it's being called the love story of this century. Each year for the past 15 years, this stork named Clepton relieves the nest. He shares with his lover, Malina, or Malina, or Malina, we'll call her Malina, and heads about 8,000 miles south to Africa. But without fail each March, Clefton returns to his nest and reunites with his lover. But this year, he was late, and it looks like, or it did look like for a while, the love story of these two birds had come to an end. Maybe he met another bird. But on Wednesday, that was not true. Clefton made it home, and get this, Melina had already started sharing their nest with another mate. But Clefton kicked the other guy out. Drama in the nest. Yes. And now the two love birds can continue their love story and add more birds to the dozen they already have together. What a love nest. <laughs> a so true love cute. Nest. I know. All right, you've seen our hippity hoppity bunner, bunny <laughs> on our seven day forecast. Well, that's definitely a sign Easter's on its way. The Gulf Coast is ready with lots of activities. In our six o'clock half hour, we're going to take a trip down the bunny trail to see all the events happening while we are cruising the coast. That's going to be in between 630 and 7. And we're going to tell you about where you can hear some good music all weekend long. Stay with us. Local 15 today continues in two minutes.